Donald Trump's hush money trial is scheduled to begin. This is in New York. It's March 25th, just a few weeks away. That is the first criminal trial that he will face. We've already been through a couple of the civil trials, and those have not gone well for him. But this is a whole different ball game because it's not only the first criminal trial that he's facing, it's the first criminal trial that any former president has ever faced. But if he gets his way, it's not going to be much of a trial at all. So in anticipation of it, it's a few weeks away, they're trying to limit who can testify, what evidence can be presented. And we're going to run through all of their requests. And I want you, dear viewer, to try to figure out if they win in all this, what is even going to be discussed during this trial. So Trump attorney Todd Blanche, bear in mind, it's Todd Blanche, not Alina Haba. So maybe he has a chance in this one. Uh, moved to, to block testimony from Michael Cohen, that's Trump's ex fixer, as well as two women that he paid to stay quiet about affairs they alleged they had with Trump. So that includes Stormy Daniels and former Playboy model Karen McDougal. So the person who transferred the hush, the quote unquote hush money, they don't want him to testify. The people who were hushed, they don't want to testify. And thus far, at least in his other trials, Donald Trump hasn't himself wanted to testify. So I don't know who's gonna talk. Like, maybe they can go to Morning Joe for some commentary. I don't know who is actually going to be talking during this trial, but that's not it. Also, Trump's reimbursements to Cohen. Um, so that's what we're focusing on. Uh, he obviously, Michael Cohen. He spent some time in prison and also, look, admittedly has established himself as not necessarily the most trustworthy person in the world, but they're using that too. So they're saying that Cohen is a liar, but that also Stormy Daniels would offer false and salacious testimony. First of all, I don't know what proof they have that she would say anything false. Would it be salacious? Well, by its very nature, the story is salacious. It's not like she would be going on a tangent into salaciousville. That's where it is. Before we continue with the story, we depend on members to keep on going. Don't wait, click join now on YouTube. And there's even more that they want to block, but I do want Danielle to, to give you a chance to weigh in on who they don't want to say anything during this thing. I mean, the fact is, look, they are going to throw everything that they can um, at the wall and see what sticks. That's what these Trump attorneys do. It doesn't matter which attorney he's using at whatever time. Their goal is to get out of um, being able to have a jury hear the truth, right? Like we've heard from Michael Cohen. I, I mean, honestly, I don't even know how you pick a jury in these cases because everybody has heard from Michael Cohen at this point. Everybody has heard from Stormy Daniels. But do I think that a judge is going to say, oh yeah, all of the key pieces of this case you get to throw out because you don't like it, including the Access Hollywood tape, including all of the ways in which Donald Trump just by his very speech, right, shows that he's a misogynist and shows that he's a liar. So um, I don't think that they're going to get even half of the things that they are calling for in this case. I think that people already know that Michael Cohen, who worked for Donald Trump for over a decade, has a tendency, had a tendency to lie. But has he been lying since he went to jail? No, he has not. He is, his story has stayed the same. So I think mm -hmm. that that's really what they're afraid of. Okay, I and I understand that fear. I mean, if if what he alleges is true, if what Stormy Daniels alleges is true, he knows about all of the different aspects of it. So uh, they obviously don't want him to talk. We'll see if they're successful in that. Now, they also want to block uh, some strategies that the prosecution might use as well as some evidence that they might present. So they don't like how prosecutors have described the hush money payments as a quote, catch and kill scheme to quash negative information about Trump in advance of the 2016 election. That's actually kind of core to what they're doing with this thing, saying that it is effectively a campaign expenditure. They're trying to control the public perception of Donald Trump by hiding information from his potential voters. I guess the joke is on the voters though, because his base seems to be immune to even the most negative news about him. So I honestly don't even know why he hit it at this point. If it fully came out, if a video of it came out, do we think his base would have a problem with it? They'd get a little chuckle, they'd say, ah, get you know, go get her dog or something, then that would be it. So again, but that's their strategy. They need to link it to the election to make it more serious. It's not just a you know transfer of money. It's something that has an effect on the election. So they also want to block the 2005 Access Hollywood tape, uh, as well as evidence from close confidants like Rudy Giuliani and Alan Weisselberg. 
I don't know what information they've gotten or could hope to get, particularly from Rudy Giuliani. He's a guy who still seems to be quite loyal to Donald Trump, but they don't want them getting involved. I guess they knew about this. It seems like that's what the lawyers are signaling. And the Access Hollywood tape obviously does not directly bear on Karen McDougal or Stormy Daniels. I don't know, it paints a picture of a guy who thinks he can do whatever he wants when it comes to women. So that one, I guess you could make an argument for, I suppose. But Daniel, what do you think about those things they're trying to block? I mean, do they think that if they block this that somehow Donald Trump looks like Mother Teresa? Like, I, I'm, I'm like, are they trying to give us all like a political lobotomy? I, I'm just confused about what they think is actually going to happen here. And the fact of the matter is, you're right. I don't know why they decided to this piece of all things that they decided to hide because his voters, what we've seen over the last what nine years, they're never going anywhere, right? They're 30% of the country that loves a misogynist, that loves a, an alleged rapist, that loves to be lied to, right? And so I, I'm confused about why he chose this thing, Stormy Dale. And honestly, maybe it was about his wife. Right, because supposedly I think that she was with child at the time. So maybe it was, maybe it had nothing to do with hiding it from the electorate so much as it had everything to do with hiding it from his third or fourth or wife, whatever, whatever this one is. I don't know. Um, but at the end of the day, again, I just don't know. All of this blocking that they're trying to do, this was about the perception of Donald Trump, whether it was how he wanted to control the perception that the voters had or control the perception that his wife had. Either way, that was the core of the lie. Yeah, yeah, and I think third, I believe she's the third, I think. But um, okay. I don't know, I'm not sure. And Trump also doesn't seem to remember some of them. So I guess it's spreading. Uh, yeah, look, that, that I think if I was, if I was Trump's lawyer, I guess I would make that case, but I don't think he wants to make that case because he wants to pretend that it didn't happen at all. But I think most people would understand if that was why he did it. And you know, he's obviously in a difficult position because if she finds out about that, then that looks bad. And hell, she might leave him like right before the election. Um, I racked my brain to try to come up with a different way that he could have avoided this issue. And the best that I've come up with is to uh, not sleep with another woman mm. months before your wife gives birth. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's workable. It's that's that's what I'm working with right now. I'm going to I'm going to iterate on it and we're going to see. Um seems easy for a lot of guys to not sleep on cheat on their wife months before she gives birth, but for Donald Trump, I guess he just couldn't avoid it. So anyway, um finally uh they want to block so this is what the other side wants to block. They want to block Trump from introducing certain testimony at trial, including claims that he's being selectively prosecuted, election interference, um, that would cast doubt on uh, Cohen's credibility. So the idea is that uh, this is not actually about anything I did. There's not actually a basis in facts. They're just doing this to mess with me or whatever. Again, though, I mean, this hush money case I had forgotten about for like mm -hmm. three years. This one goes back quite a ways. So he's tried to make this case. In all of the different cases, it hasn't worked. I don't see why it would work in this one. Um, but final thought goes to you on this. Yeah, I think that you know, one the 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 prosecution should try and block Donald Trump from being able to continue to lie that this is some type of witch hunt that he is falsely being prosecuted. We've seen this play out, right? Like we've seen it play out in terms of the fines that have been tacked on in other cases about him going out on the stump and lying about being persecuted and lying about the judges, the the lawyers and everyone else um in that courtroom. And so I think that it is necessary, but again, it it's only going to matter if it's going to hurt. Right. So if the judge says, yes, we agree with the prosecution, you shouldn't, you, you're, you cannot talk about the case. You cannot talk about it being a witch hunt. And for every time that you do, it's going to cost you a million dollars. Like <laughs> these are the things that are going to hurt Donald Trump, right? Mm -hmm. Just like wagging a finger at him and saying, you know, please be good. Like at this point, give me a break. Yeah. And by the way, there is an effort in this trial to have a gag order placed on him because, of course, he's going to try to whip up a frenzy against Stormy Daniels and Michael Cohen and the judge and the lawyers and all that. That's just what he does. Um, but everyone, stay tuned. March 25th is less than a month away, and then we are in criminal territory. We're going to spend a couple of months there. Uh, this isn't even one of the most important or high profile cases, but this is going to be sort of like the uh, criminal justice amuse-bouche 
of uh, what Donald Trump has on offer between now and election day.